How's it going? Jacob here with Smetting Performance, and today I'm going to show you how we build a 13 to 1 compression nitrous 416 cubic inch LS3. A motor is only as good as its foundation, so for this build we're going to be using a brand new GM aluminum LS3 engine block, and we're going to fill that block with our fully forged Smetting LS rotating assembly. The crankshaft is obviously going to be one of our 4 inch stroke 4340 forged cranks. It's going to run a 58x reluctor for high RPM accuracy. And our rods are going to be the Smetting Power Adder 6.125 H beam. These rods are awesome. I love working with them. They always mic out perfectly and they're rock solid. The pistons for this deal are a custom JE piston. You can see here we have an asymmetrical skirt design and a very small 2cc dome, which with the customer's 61.5cc combustion chamber will give us right at 13.0 to 1 compression. So this engine naturally aspirated should be able to easily make over 700 horsepower, hopefully 730-ish, and then he'll put on as much nitrous as he wants to, probably a 250 or a 300 shot, make that 1,000 horsepower number, and be a rock solid, super strong foundation. So, step one, I'm on the balancer right now. I'm going to calculate my bob weight with our rotating assembly, get that fixated on the bobs, and then we'll balance our crankshaft. So occasionally, whenever you are balancing a crankshaft, you'll run into a situation where the bob weight you have for this crank is actually heavier than the material you have in the counterweight of the crankshaft. And what I mean by that is normally, we're supposed to remove 50 grams in the front and 43 in the back. And the screen tells you exactly where it's out of balance, right there. And so if I line up, and right now I'm going to spin the crank like this, and you can see it moving with me. If I line it up in the front, I can't remove any material from here. The counterweight's on the back side. And same thing on the rear, if I spin it over, again, I cannot remove any material right here because the counterweight's down there. So. Instead of remove, we can change it to add. And now, in the front, our arrow is back lined up. I need to now add 50 grams right here. And it's the same story in the back. If I spin it over, I need to add the 43 grams right back here. So this crankshaft currently is a little bit overbalanced, or maybe underbalanced. Either way, it's not correct. We need to add some material to the crank so that way we can make the bob weight so that this engine will run correctly. So, in order to add material to the crankshaft, we are actually going to press into the crank these tungsten slugs. Now, tungsten weighs more and is more dense than steel is. So, what I'm going to do is drill the crankshaft horizontally this way, and I'm gonna press this slug into the crankshaft. And because this is more dense than steel, I will effectively add material or add weight to this counterweight so that I can then remove and come back and drill it the last couple places so that we can make bob. So I'm gonna mark where I need to drill. I'm gonna figure out if I can get away with just one slug or if I need to add two. There's a little calculation we have. 
Um, and then we'll pull the crank off, we'll drill it, and I'll show you guys that process as well. So with the LS crankshaft, on the rear of it, we have this reluctor wheel. Now, I need to put a slug inside of this counterweight. So before we get started, I get to play with a little bit of fire, and I'm gonna heat this ring up until it's nice and hot, expand it off the crank, and then I'll be able to pull it off with a pair of pliers, so then I can press my slugs into it when we get back to the drill press. Okay guys, it's a new day. Um, we are a regular production shop trying to get stuff done, so I had to take a break from this engine and take care of some other fires. But I've got this crankshaft now with the slugs put into it. You can see right here what I'm talking about, how we drill horizontally into the crank and then press that tungsten in there, adding material, theoretically, to the counterweight. So I'm gonna get this reassembled with the bob weights and then I can finish balancing it. Just finished this crankshaft and like every smetting crank we are under one gram front and rear not ounce under a gram if I switch this to ounce mode watch this our tolerance is now under 0.01 ounces so pay attention to that a lot of other companies advertise they balance under a quarter ounce or under you know under one but are they talking ounces or grams remember there's 28 grams in an ounce Think about it. Anyways, this crankshaft is perfect. It's, it's, it's perfect. It's as simple as that. It's great. It's gonna do awesome. I'm gonna get it final polished, cleaned, make sure all the oil galleys are free of any debris or metal, fiber, metal dust or particulates, whatever you wanna call it. And this crank is going into the assembly room and we'll start building this motor. What's going on everybody? This is Shay here with Smetting Performance. What we have for you today is we're going to assemble a 416 cubic inch LS short block, uh, 13 to 1 compression with our 11 degree cylinder head should make about 700 horsepower naturally aspirated. We're going to put a little bit of ring gap on this thing for a uh, customer wants to put a little nitrous on this deal. So 13 to 1 compression, not something you could put pump gas in. Um, using a factory LS3 block. The only difference or block prep that this has gotten is a little bit of a uh, rod clearancing as you can see here gone through and ground made room for some four inch stroke in this thing and this has got our plateau hone in it you see nice cylinder finish here other than that factory ls3 block uh, let me explain what plateau is to you guys all right guys so this would be an example of a plateau versus not plateau hone um, at a microscopic level, the cylinder wall looks like this. So when you're seeing crosshatch in a cylinder, um, take a side profile of it. Um, this is going to be what you're going to see without a plateau. Uh, very deep valleys, very high peaks. Um, this is the ring, a side profile of a ring. So you can imagine having the ring to try and seal on something that has peaks that high is going to be very tough during the breaking process. It's going to, you know, tears up the ring that doesn't make the ring last as long uh, hard for the ring to seal against this would be an example of a plateau finish uh, basically we we hone it as as it would be normally and we knock some of the peaks off here so as you can see this flat area provides a lot nicer surface for the ring to seal on while still retaining the oil in the grooves here um, so it's just a lot nicer, it's a lot nicer finish. Uh, the, f the finish will change depending on ring material we're using. We may do a video on this specifically in the future. Um, 
let us know if you want to see that down in the comments. We are also going to be utilizing our smetting rod and smetting crankshaft in this build. Um, these have a ARP 2000 bolt in them, 4340 forged H-beam rod. This is our uh, JE piston, about 13 to 1 compression as you can see, a little bit of dome there. And uh, our smetting crankshaft, 4340 forged as well. So we just checked our main bearing clearance here. These are not gonna work for us. These are a little big. So vertical oil clearance here, we have about almost four thousandths on the main, which is, that's pretty generous. We're gonna shoot for two two to two five here on the mains. And uh, that should be plenty for what we're doing here. A little, it's gonna see a little bit of RPM. We wanna make sure that, it's, it's also an aluminum block. So we tend to fight for oil pressure on, on some aluminum stuff just because it grows so much with the heat. Uh, so we're going to get those main bearing clearances all figured out. And then I'm going to go ahead and assemble rods and pistons here, do ring gap and rod bearing clearance. So real quick explanation of what I've just done with the granite block here. After installing the thrust bearings in the block and in the cap, um, I've torqued them and measured thrust. Once again, thrust is the in-play movement of the crankshaft this direction. These thrust faces here determine that clearance. Um, we had about three in this particular application. I'd like to have five, five to seven, um, and so what I've done is taken a, a granite block that's been precision ground and applied even pressure across the thrust face and taken a little bit of material off of these spaces here. Um, I'm verifying with a micrometer measuring these spaces that I haven't taken too much um, or not enough and ensuring that they're all the same. Uh, we're gonna put these back in the block and see if we can get our thrust.
off camera, we went ahead and did the rod bearing clearance, but this whole rotating assembly is completely blueprinted and balanced. The ring gap is set, the rod bearing clearance is set, the crankshaft main bearing clearance is already done, and the crank is final installed. Last step is to put it together. Okay guys, there you have it. Kind of a quick video on put us putting together a fully forged 416 cubic inch short block. This combo is going to be about 13 to 1 compression. It's got the good rings and thick wrist pins for nitrous. So this guy should easily make about 700 horsepower naturally aspirated with a high ram. And then this customer can put a 250 shot on top of it no problem and have just a nice rock solid combo. Next week I'm going to show you guys in detail how to gap piston rings and how we do it for our engines so make sure you subscribe to get notified when that video goes live next wednesday thanks for watching we'll see y'all later